Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about a question that's commonly seen in the lectures with respect to the colligative properties and it's also seen in the labs. Uh, the question is usually going to be figuring out the molar mass of a unknown compound uh, by using the colligative properties information and that's exactly something you would do in the lab settings as well. So let's just uh, jump right into it. The question reads 1.03 grams of unknown covalent solute is added to 30 grams of benzene. So I know my um, I know my solute that's going to be a covalent compound. So keep in mind covalent compounds do not really break into ions unless it's a strong acid. And then the freezing point of a resulting solution is 4.3 and then you're also given the freezing point of the benzene. Since we're dealing with the freezing point colligative property, just, just go ahead and write down the formula. Delta T is going to be equal to I M K F. We're trying to figure out the molar mass. So the formula for the molar mass or the definition of the molar mass is the grams of your solute divided by the moles of that solute. We do know how much solute we are using. We're told we have 1.03 grams of the solute. We don't really know how many moles of solute we have. And using this information, we're going to work it backward to figure out the moles of solute. And once we have the moles of solute, we can figure out the molar mass easily. Now let's just look at uh, what these values going to be. So the delta T is going to be the difference in the temperature for the normal freezing point and the freezing point of resulting solution. So you have 5.5 minus 4.3 and that's going to give you about 1.2 degrees Celsius. The M is what we're trying to figure out because once you have the molality somehow you can figure out the moles because you know how much solvent you're using. Remember the definition of the molality is the moles divided by the kilograms of solvent. So that's what we're going to be using there. So then go ahead and figure out what this uh, molality is going to be. And I can go ahead and rearrange this equation where molality is going to be equal to delta T divided by I times KF. And you can solve this question or you can do the math however you want. The delta T is 1.2 degrees Celsius. The I, since it's in covalent compound, it's going to be 1. And then times you have the Kf value to be 5.12 degrees Celsius over molality. So let's see what that comes out to be. Your molality here is going to be 1.2 divided by 5.12. That's 0.234 molal. Now I'm going to use this molality and we're going to be using the amount of benzene, which is the solvent here, being used to figure out the moles. So I'm starting out with 30 grams of benzene. So how much is that going to be in kilograms? So keep in mind, grams to kilograms, you got to divide by 1,000. So it's 0 0.03 kilograms of your solvent, or in this case is the benzene. And then we're going to use the molality here to figure out the moles. So I have 0.234 moles divided by kilograms of the solvent. So the kilograms of the solvents cancels out, and that leaves you with the moles here. So it's going to be times 0 0.03. That's point, uh, 0 0.00703 moles of that unknown compound. Now we can go ahead and plug that uh, back into the molar mass. So your molar mass is going to be 1.03 grams divided by the moles you got here is 0 0.00703 moles. And uh, let's see what that comes out to be. So 1.03 divided by 0 0.00703 is going to be 146.5 grams per mole. So that's one of the questions we have here to figure out the molar mass of this unknown compound. And uh, if you're doing this question in a lab settings, uh, what would you do? You will have, um, you will measure the mass of the unknown compound and then dissolve that in a given amount of solvent. 
then you figure out what the change gonna be in the freezing point. So another way of saying you experimentally figure out what the delta T gonna be, and then from there you work it backward to figure out the molar mass. And then you don't necessarily have to be using only freezing point uh, as your calligraphy property. You could the question could be asked a similar way, but using a boiling point, elevation, osmotic pressure, and even the vapor pressure in the lab settings usually the freezing point depression is, is easier to use. Now this question has an additional part where it says we have we done this uh, separate analysis where the unknown found to have 49% carbon, 48.2% chlorine, and then 2.75% hydrogen. And you got to figure out uh, the formula of this compound now, right? And if you given the percentages, and that's going back to the Gen Chem 1, you can figure out your empirical formula. And once you know your molar mass, you can figure out the molecular formula. So let's just go ahead and figure out the empirical formula. And there are some steps that we have to take. Before we do anything, make sure you add up all these percentages to so that they add up to 100. And if they do add up to 100, you can take those percentages as grams. So I have 49. 0 0.0 grams of carbon, then I got 48.2 grams of chlorine, then I got 2.75 grams of hydrogen. The very first step you have to do is convert each one of those into the moles. And we're going to be using the atomic masses here. So one mole of carbon is going to be 12.01 grams of carbon. And similarly, we do for the chlorine one mole of chlorine is going to be 35.45 grams of chlorine. It's going to be a good idea to have at least two decimal places for these atomic masses. And then the hydrogen is going to be one mole of hydrogen is 1.008 grams of hydrogen. So all these atomic masses, I'm just getting those off the periodic table. Let's do this math now. So for the first one, well, when we set this up, all the grams will cancel out. And then you're only going to have moles left. We'll do the calculation. 49 divided by 12.01 gives you 4.08 moles of carbon. And then we have 48.2 divided by 35.45. That gives you 1.36 moles of chlorine. Then as far as the hydrogen goes, it's going to be fairly the same, but let's just still go ahead and do the calculation. It's 2.73 moles of hydrogen. Once you find the moles from these masses, the next step is to divide each one of those moles by the smallest mole you have here. The smallest mole we got is going to be 1.36. So divide each one of those by 1.36 to figure out uh, what the resulting value is going to be here. So 4.08 divided by 1.36 gives you 3. So we got 3 moles of carbon. Uh, that's going to be 1 mole of chlorine. And then for the hydrogens, we can do 2.73 divided by 1.36 and that's going to be 2.0 or just two moles of hydrogen and since they came out to be the whole numbers I'm going to have the, uh, the empirical formula to be so we'll say empirical formula to be C3 uh, this should have been Cl there C3H2Cl so that's your empirical formula. Now you know the empirical formula and you also know the molar mass. From there, you can calculate the molar, uh, the molecular formula. So to do that, figure out what's going to be the empirical formula mass. So the empirical formula mass, so remember you got three carbons, so it's going to be 12 times three. Then plus you have roughly two hydrogens there, and then you got one chlorine, that's going to be 35.5. So that gives you about 
0.5 grams per mole for the empirical formula, you want to go ahead and divide the molar mass over the empirical formula mass to figure out what the ratio is going to be that will get multiplied to the empirical formula mass. So the molar mass was around 146.5 and then this is going to be 73.5 that's going to be 1.99 so that's going to be almost 2 let's say approximate 2 and uh, since it's 2 all we really got to do to multiply these subscripts now by 2. So your empirical formula when you convert into the molar mass or molecular formula it becomes C6H4Cl2 so that's going to be your final answer there. Okay so that's how you're going to be calculating the molecular formula uh, so this does have two questions in there obviously the very common question is to figure out the molar mass using the colligative properties and if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.